Hello, what's up my friend? So I'm sure you have all heard that Mumu, the stockbroker that we all know and love, will soon land in Malaysia, sometime later this year, fully regulated and licensed to operate in this country. At the moment, they have received approval in principle, AIP, and will take a little bit of time before they are able to fully operate here. So in the meantime, I have compiled a few of my own predictions on what you can expect to see from them when they land here. As always, everything I'm saying in this video is my opinion only and may not be 100% reflecting the actual numbers or details of Momo Malaysia's future offering. Just putting it out across in case you took it the wrong way. Alright, let's start with fees. Money, money, money. We all know Momo Singapore charges 99 US cents platform fees per trade for the US stock market and that's actually super low across whatever the current current Malaysian brokers are offering like M Plus Global at 3 US dollars, Rakuten Trade at around 2 dollars and MIDF Invest and FSM1 it's more than $8 for them, so let's ignore the last two. So naturally, you would think they might remain the same price tag of $0.99 cents since the closest competitor, Rakuten Trade, is doing about $2, right? Well, you also have to remember that Weibo is also coming into Malaysia at the same time as well, and they will most likely launch with zero commission trading and fractional shares trading on day one. So that will naturally apply some pricing pressure onto Momo as well, since they are direct competitors in this industry. So in my opinion, we might see 99 cents per trade or even lower. That's definitely a possibility. But whatever the case may be, the current brokers have a lot of ground to catch up for sure. And next, let's talk about the potential features that Momo may or may not launch on day one in Malaysia. Firstly, fractional shares trading. And I'm inclined to say they might not offer it on day one because they have not been offering that for the other markets as well. But that's not to say they will not launch it forever because in Malaysia, there is clear demand for fractional shares trading by the consumers and that's also why Rakuten Trade introduced that feature very recently. And if Weibo is highly likely to do that on day one as well, then it's safe to assume that they will also be pressured to roll out that feature as soon as possible, if not on day one. And next, stock trading tools like Stock Screener, Earnings Calendar, Live News, technical charts, etc. I'm sure those will be ready on day one since it's just imported technology from their regional HQ. And I believe as long as they pass the local regulatory test, then it should not be a problem for them to roll that out on day one. But speaking of local regulation, I think we might not be able to see their money market funds on day one. And in case you are not aware yet, they have this Sing dollar and also US dollar money market fund that allows you to park your extra cash for additional 2-4% to per annum of additional interest. And why did I say that? Well, traditionally, our local regulators have been known to be very protective of the local banks and also ringgit currency. So there will be definitely some control or restriction in place to avoid massive outflow of ringgit towards foreign currency money market funds. And the fourth one, which is very closely tied to the previous point, is their multi-currency account. Currently, with Momo Singapore, you can hold four different currencies, Sing dollar, US dollar, Hong Kong dollar, and also Chinese yuan. As for the Malaysian version, you might only see Malaysian ringgit, Sing dollar, US dollar, and also Hong Kong dollar for the very least. So yes, you might be able to just deposit using online FBX, which is a super helpful feature for Malaysians, and then convert them to the foreign Foreign currencies. But the more interesting question is, will there be a limit on how much foreign currency you can hold on your wallet? Maybe, and it's very probable. Maybe it's a limit of 1 million ringgit? I don't know, but I'm sure there should be some sort of handicap that will be there in place to avoid excessive currency outflow. And the last one, Busa Malaysia Stock Trading. Yes, I would think local regulators will require Momo to offer Busa Malaysia in the trading app as well probably as part of their requirement to operate here in Malaysia. So I think that's a huge win for all Malaysians because now we have more tools and also more competitive rates to trade in Malaysia. Though whether or not it will be cheaper than the 7 ringgit per trade which is what Rakuten Trade is currently offering remains a question mark to me. Maybe the lowest could be 5 ringgit per trade but I don't see them stretching far beyond that minimum. Next, US stock custodian which means who will be the counterparty that will handle all of the US stocks at the back end of the brokerage. And in this case, I'm gonna make a guess that it's going to be done through their in-house clearing and settlement 
just like how interactive brokers do it for themselves. And in case you are not aware yet, Momo's parent company, Futu Holdings Limited, is a publicly listed company on the US Nasdaq stock market with a market cap of over $5.5 billion as of the recording of this video. And that's actually pretty respectable because that's larger than the size of our RHB Bank's market cap. And looking at their latest financials, you can see that Futu Holdings is actually a profitable company that is constantly growing their profits quarter after quarter. Quarter. And as of the end of 2022, they hold a pretty solid cash and cash equivalents of over 644 million US dollars. So in terms of financials, you can say that they are overall pretty solid. But long story short, I personally think that this is one edge that Momo has over Weibo since they are technically publicly listed as compared to Weibo. So that will definitely be part of your consideration factor as well when both of them arrive in Malaysia in the next few months. Whew, okay, technical stuff aside, let's talk about something with more fun and when I mean fun I mean physical fun and it's not what you're thinking ah uh. don't hamsa uh. okay jokes aside I think we can definitely expect some road shows like what they did back in Singapore where you can win certain rewards like cash vouchers merchandise etc and I'm pretty sure they are going to repeat the same go-to market strategy because it has proven to work before with our neighbor so what more would you expect especially when it comes to Malaysia right so those of you staying in Klang Valley especially those high touch point areas such as Pavilion KL Mid Valley Wan Utama I think they will definitely target these areas for road shows. And another thing is, where would their physical office be? Will there be a physical experience store like what Apple offers, where you can just simply walk in and test out their app, or reach out to their personnel or customer support for help etc. Just like a normal Malaysian bank branch. I would think that those are really good investments to build trust, especially among Malaysians, which are still actually very heavily reliant on physical banks. Could be a thing, right? Alright, that's all I have for you right now. Those are my predictions based on what I've observed and know from my online research as well as my experience in this industry. Let me know what do you think. Were my predictions within your expectation or do you think there's more stuff that I could have missed? Comment them down below for me. And I'm sure all of you watching this video are excited for their launch. So do I. So do subscribe and stay tuned to this channel as I will bring you the latest update on Momo Malaysia as soon as I get the latest scoop. But in the meantime, feel free to follow my Instagram to get the latest updates. Okay, thank you for watching and as usual, I will see you in the next one.